Hey guys, what's up? This is Varun, and welcome to a new episode of the Apple Tutor. Now today we'll be taking a look at the iPhone 6, one of the two phones Apple has released this year, along with its older brother, the 5.5 inch iPhone 6 Plus. Apple has made several changes with respect to design and hardware, and the arrival of this device has also sparked a lot of attention on iOS 8. All the iOS goodness works seamlessly with this iPhone, so unlocking your phone with Touch ID and browsing through pages, accessing Control Center, the Taskbar and the Notification Center are all made easy. Clearly, one of the biggest upgrades is the display. The iPhone 6 comes with a nice 4.7 inch display, what Apple calls the Retina HD display, which in itself is quite a big upgrade from the 4 inch screen on the 5S. The 6 Plus has a much larger 5.5 inch screen, which is a bit too big for my liking. The 6 has a resolution of 1334 by 750p, so a little over a HD 720p display. It maintains the same great 326 pixels per inch from the iPhone 5S. The resolution is relatively low compared to some of the other phones in the market like the HTC One M8 and the LG G3, the latter supporting a quad HD display. However, the iPhone 6 makes up for the relatively low resolution with a great contrast ratio and color reproduction with excellent viewing angles given its IPS display. The iPhone 6's compact feel with a nice sleek ergonomic design on a thin aluminium chassis gives this phone a gorgeous design. And talk about the thinness. This phone was described as dramatically thin by Apple and I couldn't disagree a single bit. This phone is just 6.9mm thin, making it one of the most thinnest phones out there in the market. This is quite a revelation in the design department, but there is one minor downfall as a result. The protruding camera lens, while a bother to some, indicates there was no compromise made on the camera despite the thin design. But the phone can rock a little when placed on a flat surface. This isn't an issue for me personally and it really isn't noticeable in day-to-day -day use. The power button is now conveniently placed on the side of the phone for easier access given the larger size. Other than that, I don't have too much to complain about with the design other than the plastic strips that mimic the HTC devices on the back. I just feel they don't blend in with the overall finished look of the iPhone. But that is a minor thing, that is subjective. Hell, everything about the design is subjective. In terms of audio, the phone speakers are located at the bottom right of the phone and are much more rich in sound and are much louder when compared to the previous model. There may be times when you cover the speakers when playing games for instance, but this again is just a minor issue and can be easily avoided. The use of cameras on smartphones is increasing significantly and the iPhone does not disappoint at all in this respect. It has an 8 megapixel camera, which emphasizes its focus pixels. These allow for a faster snap and faster autofocus. Picture quality remains nice and the same goes for the video which can shoot HD 1080p at 30 or 60 frames per second. In these photos, the image processing along with faster shutter speeds give really clear and sharp images. We have new features like time lapse and slow mo, which can go up to 240 frames per second for really smooth film style slow motion clips, which is a really cool feature you can have some fun with. Just take a look at this for example. Front-facing camera is still stuck at 1.2 megapixels, which is a slight disappointment, but the brightness is much higher and the front-facing camera has the built-in HDR. 
It's still good enough for things like Snapchat and video calling, and just selfies in general. On paper, the specifications of the iPhone 6 don't look all that impressive, with a 1.4GHz A8 dual-core processor and just 1GB of RAM. But the phone is really smooth, with applications opening up quicker than ever in a consistent manner. The A8 chip is about 25% faster and has up to 50% faster graphics than the previous generation. Along with a 13% smaller chip and increased power efficiency, make this quite an upgrade in terms of performance. Now with respect to battery life, the iPhone 6 has a 1810mAh battery and when compared to devices like the Samsung Galaxy S5 which has a 2800mAh battery and even the LG G3 which has a 3000mAh battery, the iPhone 6's battery seems kinda scratchy. But it does actually perform quite well. Compared to the previous model, the iPhone 5S, it does last about a few hours more and it also has a 10% increase, about 10-15% to increase in battery life, so that is quite good. Now the standby time is also very impressive. Uh, if you do by any chance forget to charge your phone overnight, you'll probably end up with around 94-95% battery life, which is excellent. And uh, no complaints at all when it comes to standby time, I feel that's great. To conclude, I think the iPhone 6 is a great buy for people coming from any device, uh, whether it be, I mean, I was personally coming from the Samsung Galaxy S3, so it was a good upgrade for me. If you're even a 5S user and you appreciate the extra screen real estate and you feel you'd be taking advantage of that extra space, then by all means, feel free to upgrade to this device. I feel, given the impressive specifications, the great camera, and the beautiful display, I think uh, it's a great run for your money. And uh, given all the, given all those features in a really thin, gorgeous package, I think you wouldn't go wrong with this device. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have, and if you have any questions or comments regarding um, any of the views presented in this video, please by all means leave them in the comment section below. Anyways guys, I'll catch you for the next one. Cheers.